Hi guys, welcome back to another weekly trade setups video. I hope you all had a great week and even better weekend. For those that have been peacefully protesting, like myself, this weekend, I just want you to know that everyone here at Amplify stands with you. Uh, and in some crazy way, it seems that 2020 could just be the year that, that wakes us up. Um, it's, you know, started off incredibly uh, bad uh, and it's still you know full of bad things that are happening but we're starting to see a change and I think that's great to see you know people really coming together so yeah everyone here at Amplify we, we stand with you um, moving on uh, to less important things we'll go about it the same way we did last weekend and we will have a look at the charts how we finish the week review that uh, and then move on to some new levels that may have appeared and areas to be aware of uh, and then also i did a instagram story not long ago uh, just asking you guys about how uh, or what markets you may want me to look at so uh, i'll go over a few of those so i've got uh, a different platform up as well which we'll have a look at those um, which aren't uh, ones that we trade predominantly here at amplify so yeah, moving on to the euro, um, you know, like I said last weekend, I want to leave the levels on and we review. However, uh, I've clearly gone uh, on this at the end of that last video and just talked about the monthly trend line, so removed, unfortunately, the daily levels. However, you can see we broke that monthly trend line, so let's just put it onto uh, the daily chart here. We might click on that daily chart and you can see just the reaction around that trend was quite nice you know we broke through we came back found support um but yeah in terms of review reviewing it um we'll almost have to start from scratch unfortunately on this one so i'll remember to, to leave those lines on for this time next week uh the pound um so where was the first of june so we yeah we we, we closed obviously just before this 123 83 a fantastic monday really was wasn't it and you know i think i was saying this this time last week how you know we're in that area where the bulls need us above the bears i'd only be really interested below the trend line great monday close above this line that we had marked marked up drawn here uh 124.67 lovely push to the next area you know it's the next point people will be looking at the 200 day moving average, let me just check it is the 200 day. Yeah, you can see it was tested. <laughs> Look at that. Finish right on it. Right on it. I mean, if you're if you're bearish, you, you got save, you're bullish, you're thinking, oh, we got to close above our, our two uh, areas here on April and, uh, well, April, and uh, we just couldn't quite get above there. We tested also incredibly importantly this this previous low here so you know for a while i've been saying we're going to get 127 and okay we've got it but that's not with a couple of you know pushes lower it, it feels it feels like this is a great place to take profit of your longs guys it really really does you've got the the fed on wednesday as we know i'll sort of come back to that in a bit but the jobs numbers were really good on Friday, really good. I mean, when I heard that squawk, me and Anthony were doing a live session for our traders uh, and those that are on Amplify Live as well, so our, our community. And it, it came in as 2.5 million. And I was thinking, did they forget to say minus? The guys at, at New Squawk, obviously they didn't. Um, but yeah, so really good. So it'll be interesting to see what Powell says on Wednesday. Um, notoriously, the Monday, Tuesday after non-farm payroll was quite quiet. People pre-positioning ahead of the, the Fed as well. Wednesday, I'm not expecting fireworks in those first couple of days. Even more reason to maybe unwind. But yeah, the pound you can see reacted really well to, to the levels we had marked up. Aussie dollar, let's have a look. I mean, we... You know, one of the things I was clearly looking at here was, you know, can we get a break and retest above... Uh, that level um, there was retests on the 1st of June but I mean look at that it's flown flown through it um, really you know strong push here uh, and it's an, it's another one we were saying you don't want to be sure really you don't want to be sure unless we break support on these markets be late 
be late to the party. You know, don't go chasing. You know, love a you know trend line here that held up play. I mean, uh, if we had maybe closed the day below say 66.13, then it's a different story. We can look to sell. You know, you've got these fail tests here, but yeah, decent push, uh, and we'll have a little look over some new levels there. The S and P. Uh, where's the first of June? It's here, isn't it? So we pushed higher into our level where we would expect some resistance. We found some there before breaking through on Friday, and, and look here, right on that that area I've marked up. That's a massive, massive area, isn't it? And again, speaking on the pound and the euro and the Aussie why not take some profit here that's exactly how i would be looking at it unfortunately for my trade i've only got one lot left on if i had two it's 100 percent being taken here uh, especially with the with with the fed coming wednesday you know i'd, I'd take it there the, the nasdaq uh, look at that new all-time high how do our levels get on where's the first of june there, so we get that push, decent close above, offers a bit of support, doesn't it, before pushing on. I mean, it, it, yeah, a nice little push. Uh, again, your long NASDAQ, you know, last time we were at the all-time high, we came all the way down. Is it going to happen again? Probably not. Could it? Potentially anything can happen in the markets. Got the Fed in three days, let's take a bit of profit. The Dow, lovely uh, push. I was about to say, do I not have any lines on here? Uh, strong reaction to the 200 day moving average, strong reaction to our level here on the 6th of March. Decent push on closing above these, these points, pretty key. You have to say that is pretty key. Where's the next level? Okay, you've got the low now of, of the 3rd of December, where, where Trump said there's going to be no trade deal before the election before changing his mind two days later. But we'll come back to the, the down and do some levels on that. Gold, couldn't get uh, back above this trend line that we had on. Where's the first? So yeah, I mean, obviously with that risk on, big push down and obviously we'll then we'll be looking at some of these levels now. I, I don't mind a long run of 1660, to be honest. But again, it's, it's you know, from, from gold, from being a medium position, Medium term, God, you've got to get long this market. We're now thinking about, well, hang on, those job numbers were good. Hence the risk on we cut uh, rather than dollar strength. But if the Fed are in any way hawkish, I mean, that dollar strength is going to send gold a lot lower. So, yeah. Is it a long right now? I think we'll know more on Wednesday. Um, oil uh, headlines over the weekend OPEC plus group decided yesterday on Saturday to extend those output limits at almost the same level through July instead of tapering them uh, as planned at the end of June so are we going to have a little gap in oil potentially potentially I'll check Twitter later which is really good you know um, and if you haven't watched Anthony's uh, video on Twitter it's somewhere below here if you're looking um, but it can be fantastic Sunday evening Twitter's great um, if you're looking at the right places of course there's a, a lot of negativity on there at the moment but it's um, you know good to get a feel for what people are expecting and I'll be looking to see whether there's going to be a gap higher in oil or not uh, I still stand by we, we get to 41 uh, I say the same every week and I don't trade oil that much at all uh, intraday um, but it feels magnetically drawn towards this level we broke above our length of March high you break above come down support one two get that push do we hit 4102 do people then take profit do we then come lower we'll have to wait and see let's have a look at some of those levels later silver pushed on I'll say I was bullish silver from the start of the, the video not the start of the video the start of the talk about silver up to this area I mean, that's technical analysis for you there. I know you had the risk on into the back end of the week, but you've got to feel if we could have got a close above there, this market could have pushed on. It didn't. We found resistance. We then broke back below our previous, what is then going to be support, and we pushed lower. And this is what I'm saying about the euro, about the Aussie, about the pound, about the S&P. Be late. You don't need to be a hero and sell up here. How about you sell when the buyers are no longer in control. At this moment here, 
you've got to say if we come back down and look, look at that reaction the buyers do take over from that point so if it goes sellers come in and, and that's what happens look caps in hindsight here is speaking and, and it's easy to say that but the amount of times you see when these levels go that's when you get that push the dax i didn't have many le levels drawn on by the looks of it above the 200 day moving average looks like this area might have come in let's have a quick look oh what a what a level what a level i mean here you i mean let's go back to the, the s p quickly look at that look at that bang on here i think the dow was also almost at some great resistance there and the dax i mean three days before a central bank meeting where you just had incredibly surprisingly good job numbers i don't know if you'd want to be adding to a position above uh right now above those levels fine just be aware of wednesday um let's have a quick look at the new levels then let's have a quick look i don't want to keep you too long what we've done 10 minutes okay let's try speed through some of these so euro daily chart let's just remove the the points you know i like doing this by now it's just a good way to start with that blank canvas and being aware of you know any new levels that i need to be or need to have on uh, resistance above where we're trading Ooh. got these couple highs I'd be surprised if we get that this week to be honest I, I was saying to um, our traders on Friday about this level which we hit of course great fine great place to take profit we then get the false break and I'll send if we close below here you've had a massive rejection of all of this area so Technically, I'm bearish the euro of of the first, of this week. Wednesday changes everything. Wednesday evening Fed, um, and hopefully we can cover that live actually for you guys. Um, so watch this space. But yeah, uh, you know, line in the sand. We we've got a great level up here. The these two highs. So below where we're trading, where do the uh, the bears need to get us below? This is a good point here. You got the high from the third of June. It was also a good level back in March. So yeah, below here. Then you'd be looking for for price to come to this point, uh, and and you've got quite a lot of res highs from here before it could break down and and you get down to this point. I don't think we get anywhere near the the 110 handle, but just be aware of of how important this area is as a support point and how if the Fed are potentially going to be uh, you know dovish, continue to be, you know this is an area where people will be looking to get long back up towards those highs um, if we have a move like we did last week we break above that 115 and you're looking at some of these highs going back to the sort of March time uh, and March and January uh, 2019 I was gonna say this year March and uh, January last year so just bear that in mind um, I want to leave the levels on don't I I'm just gonna get a new euro chart up here just for the month and let's just have a look at that trend channel obviously we broke broke it we, we had already broken it of course but look at this here probably worth having this on uh, one test two what happens on that third let's get a little horizontal line if that comes it's not far off being those highs maybe wishful thinking but big area isn't it if we can get there uh, also on the month um, big point here we've got a few weeks left of this month uh, as well but yeah the bears need to take control and this is i think it's a good week it was a good finish for the bears on friday despite getting battered throughout the the week uh the pound do i need to take any of these levels off let's get rid of the arrows let's get rid of the arrows 200 day moving average key um 200 day moving average key rejection of this massive uh, where would I be a seller uh, potentially on a daily close below these highs I think that could be quite nice also how about this high here we, we once we broke above we couldn't close below so this could be in a new point just to consider you know the short back towards these highs here all points where the buyers will want to come in above new levels to put on here the low of the 11th of March and then obviously mark up the 12th 
Um, I'd be surprised if we get up there, but just just those lows, lows and highs of these these days round here. Massive resistance though from what was support. So yeah, look, great place to take profit. You know, look at this from. 27th, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 trading days, one of them red. One of them red. I'd be surprised if we push on. Likewise, with, I mean, look at that in the Euro. Um, new levels in the Aussie. Uh, where would I be a seller? This looks to me like a nice point. Good support. I mean, I remember this really nice short back in uh, in January. I got in on that down to, to these lows. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Uh, but uh, yeah, below here, good support when we broke through. Markets respecting it. Um, I'm having that on. I'm definitely having that on. So I know it's a long way uh, below where we're trading, but be late, be late to the party. I had a little trend line on here. Was it worth having on? Doesn't look like we respected it, to be honest. I'd remove that not worth having on that was another you know test is it going to be a trend line it wasn't so forget it um if we have a risk on week aussie will push on most likely um you can see three rejections of the wednesday high uh surprising it, it didn't maybe go and test that to 31st of december uh, high where are we on the year pretty much where we open interesting um, on that, what a recovery! And one of the one of the markets you guys want me to go over is pound against the Aussie, so I'll do that in a moment. Uh, but yeah, those would be the levels for the Aussie. Um, conscious of time, so I'm just going to skip through uh, these relatively quick. Uh, let's get rid of those lines on the S and P. I think the way the S and P has traded over the last end of April, since end of April, has been fantastic. I really, really do. Uh, new levels to the upside, just the high that I would have on uh, 25th of Feb, and then we've got those points from last week already. Um, I probably also have a nice one in here, uh, which we broke through last week, but I, I don't know if I would change anything. Where would I be a seller? Um, and it would be very short term being a seller. I think we go all time highs, as you know. But below this point here, you've got to say. The uh, the bulls won't be happy. When was the last Fed meeting? 12th of May. What happened on the 12th of May? We push up into it, we come lower. Um, do a little bit of bit back testing, guys, as well. Look at the the last you know 24 months worth of Fed meetings. A lot of them disappoint a bit, and we come lower. So that's what I am expecting here. I think we do come back down. I would love to load up here. I would love it. I really, really would. Um, I don't think we're going to get the chance. Big move to back lower to there, isn't it? NASDAQ all-time highs. Um, close below all of that. Close below this point here, the high that we had on the, the 26th of May. We can see we once we broke through, fail test, fail test to close below. That would be key. So 96.18, big line in the sand. Big line in the sand that the bears will want to break, the bulls want to hold, uh, and then we can start looking at maybe some trend lines from these lows. You know, is anything here gonna gonna mark up? Is anything here worth having on? Do we get a third test? That kind of thing um, to to bear in mind. But those lines that I've got marked up here, I'd still still have those on. The Dow, we've got our new key level. It takes something to get through there. Big area here now above 24th of Feb even bigger with these lows makes a zone makes a very strong resistance level we're above the 200 day moving average which the dow respects so bear that in mind if you're bearish you want it below there if you want to be i would say super cautious i'd be a seller of below 25 oh, 25 809 back down towards this point here we never got the retest of this mark uh of this zone that we broke did we pushed on we didn't get the retest of these so just bear that in mind if you're getting you know some big moves lower um the bulls uh, you know are still in control of these areas uh, in my opinion so just don't go aggressive be patient sell underneath or buy above um gold uh keeping those lines on we've just got to be aware of areas below where we're trading and start picking out some of these 
you asked me, you know, a, a few weeks ago, and let's just remove everything. That, that trend line for me now is, is invalid, but we are range bound, and oh, you got to you got to love a a long here, haven't you? Got to. Little false break on that if you if you want to be patient. Maybe after Wednesday. Maybe after Wednesday could be the opportunity there. Another area to be uh, late on is if we can get back above these these bottoms here to to get the long on a break retest go or you know the price action on the day. Big zone. I don't want to remove that rectangle. Let's get a new one in here. Big zone here. These lows, those highs, and then up to towards here as well. And then this point on. Just get these lines drawn on because of course. We want to review next week. Um, that's how I'd be looking at it. Below here, this market for me goes down and tests these two highs, and and that would be great value for a long, but uh, not too good for medium-term bulls. Oil. Let's have a look. Let's see what happens. For me, this is such a big area. I, I, I mean, maybe it spikes on the day to to here, forty-three twenty-four. Um, maximum next week, fifth of March that high these are big levels aren't they if you're bearish for me you're you're a seller under here under 36.29 but just because of the importance of it resistance okay people taking profits in push through come back support push on okay where are my stops below 36.29 where's the short come in below 36.29 would be the way to look at it in my opinion silver let's wait and see same as gold big level up to the to, to the upside Buyers can come back in above 18, 19. A lot of support around here. If that level goes, I think we get 16, 53 and a half quick. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Is that a little bit of a trend line on these lows? Yeah, good. Get that a little break of that. You you wouldn't want to you want to want to be long, would you? Um, little longs above these lows, potentially. You can see support, 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 break above 17.881 could be a long. I'd prefer to be late and get in 18.19. The DAX, I mean, recovery amazing. Looks like US equities. However, find me a bigger, bigger level in the DAX this week. Wow, 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 wow. Look on these equities. You know, you know, I'm bullish overall, and we get all-time highs in all of them that we've gone through so far in this year again um, in my opinion that could change next week yeah, it may be a silly thing to say at the moment I'm, I'm still bullish however first couple of days this week and Wednesday I'm not looking to, to add to positions however after Wednesday with the Fed we close above this area in the DAX it, it's, it's going to push on you know then you're, you're sort of thinking about these highs you're thinking about that gap fill the importance of, of this zone here and then it is all-time highs, which is insane to think about, but it's the reality right now. If you're short, uh, just be aware of these pre previous highs. You know, you probably want to be short, I would about to say, below there, below our 200-day moving average. You know, it's uh, it led to another push. It was good support here. Choppy, yes, in uh, the August time, but look how good it has been. You've got to, you've got to admire uh, the patience here if, if you do get in, and, and it, I think it would reward a good trade back towards you know, some of these levels on here. So short below 200-day moving average and the, the areas back in the beginning of March. I think it's not a bad trade to have. Moving on, okay, 23 minutes, so we've got a couple to go through. My phone, unfortunately, is on the, the other side of the room, so... There was a couple of uh, other than the markets we've already gone through, a couple of charts that you guys wanted to to have a little look over. So let me just drag drag it. Yeah, here we go. Sorry, that has taken me uh, a while there. Okay, you can see that. Yeah, you can. Um, one of them was the FTSE. It was the FTSE? Let's have a little look on the day. Strong push. Um, we filled the the gap uh, last week. Important because I've got a little bit of a bearish um, outlook. I'm a short below 
you know this area here those highs back down to here not bad I like a I like a long uh, I like a long if we can come back to this point again I'm waiting for Wednesday you're probably sick and tired of me saying Wednesday by now uh, levels to the upside here look at that one two push through that's big that is big and if that goes then you really are looking up to these highs it's playing catch up isn't it now if the pound weakens as well and then we get some risk on I like this a bit more um, worth just bearing in mind those levels to the upside I don't think we could get much above there but at some point we are going to be looking at these lows here there's still a grind mean, you know what I, I think just looking at this and I don't look at the FTSE much but I'll be I'll be having a little load up on a long through to be honest I mean if we can get back to this area get some bullish price action long stop below this potential trend and these lows I mean that could be a great trade a target in here target in here I like it obviously you know de-risk here there and then if you've got a, a final bit on why not get up to those highs as well around here really like that really like that I'll be looking at that I'll be looking at that the other one was pound Aussie um, Aussie strength has been phenomenal the pound against the dollar has been very good. Are we due a little recovery? Be late is how I would say. If you're looking for longs, um, if you're looking for longs here, you've got a lot of these lows, haven't you, in the mix? Oh, I don't know. It's it's a tricky one because it's come down so much. I mean, the area we've just found support on. If you're if you're a little aggressive, it's, it is a great place to get long. One rejection, two rejection, three. Yeah, I mean the risk reward isn't too bad. You you, you de-risk there. You then would you know de-risk on these lows. And if it gets above here, this is me saying that be late. This is when I think you could get you know a bigger push on. Uh, to be honest, and be looking at some of these highs around here. You know, if you're you know longer term happy with with being long the pound. You know, we're at levels. Uh, last trade in October last year. Can we come back lower? Of course we can, but uh, not below last week's lows. You know, if you're short, these points are all key for retest back. Um, and if we close the day below the uh, this area here where the mouse is, you'd be looking at levels last traded September last year and a lot of support around there. So yeah. I mean, look, if I was long, I'd be happy. Stop below here, target up there. It's a good, what's that? Let's call it three to one, four to one up to this target. Uh, if you're short, hopefully you book profit because this is, you know, not what you want to see. Uh, but let's have a look at what's happened previously. Support, 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 support on what was a key level. And then you get that breakthrough retest. Wow, what a trade. What a trade. Anyone take that uh, 2nd of June? That's a phenomenal entry, that isn't it? Support, support, breakthrough, come back. Aussie's still going well. Risk on. Wow, trade down to here. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you uh, for, for tuning in if you've got this far. Um, any questions, please get them in the chat and, and look out for my video, not video, Instagram message next week where if there is any other markets that you guys want me to look at and the more obscure not a problem um i'm more than happy to do that but uh yeah this will be it for for this week and i look forward to interacting with you guys in the comments but also catching up with you all uh this time next week take care and have a great week